Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. Have you ever wondered why we have so many disparate systems? I've said this in so many of my videos that there are over 1900 payment systems and less than 2 or 3% are connected. And if you look at the wallet system and stored value system, there are perhaps more than 10,000 of them, right? 10,000 and less than, I don't know, oh my God, even 1% would be connected would be an amazing number. And why do we have such disparate systems and what can we, what can be done about it? Well, in order to look at this problem, we need to go back and look at the internet, right? So if, if you look at the internet today, what is it? Is it really one huge computer network? Not really. It's just a lot of disparate smaller networks in an ISP. One ISP may have 10,000 users and that network connects to another ISP through a router, which connects to another ISP through a router and so forth. And soon enough, the entire world is connected. You can't really point out to a certain network from start to finish and say, oh, this is the internet. No. Everything on the on the on the, on a network is the internet, and when they start communicating and talking to each other through routers, and routers are what joins two networks together, it becomes the internet. What we don't have in the financial system is we don't have financial routing. We are not able to take two disparate systems and connect them, and that is what is missing. And this is where you know Ripple's um, Stefan. Um, uh, Stefan and the other guy, I forgot his name, Mr. Schwartz, uh, I think it's Evan Schwartz, they basically came up with the ILP, the Interledger Protocol. And what the Interledger Protocol basically does is it allows two disparate blockchains, payment systems, etc. to talk to each other. Let me explain that very simply. One thing that people understand if wrongly that ILP is only able to connect blockchains per se. If it's a cryptocurrency project, only then the ILP will come into work. No. Uh, when you have a regular bank account, where is your money sitting? Well, it's in the bank. Yes, but it's on a bank's ledger. So if, if you have a stored valued account with Starbucks, where is your money sitting? With Starbucks. Yeah, but where is that? On their ledger. If you have money sitting on in Bitcoin, where is that sitting? Well, on the blockchain ledger and so forth. So no matter where value is parked, it is some form of a ledger. Now, whether it's a crypto ledger or not is irrespective to, uh, it really doesn't come into play into this equation. What the interledger does is it allows you to have connections to both the ecosystems. And it has, does it in a very intelligent way. So here's a very, very, very watered down understanding of how it works. So you have two ecosystems and the two ecosystems are connected by, let's say me. So I have an ecosystem on the left, a payment ecosystem on the left, one on the right, and I am the connector. And what does a connector do? A connector basically connects or routes payment between two ecosystems. And the way they do it is because I have an account here and I have an account here. So in this bank A, I would have an account. In this bank B, I would have an account. And if money comes into my collection account in bank A, it'll be there. And then once I know I've received it there, then I can pay out from here in my from my disbursement account in bank B. I did a video earlier on. You should be able to see it on how this works. And we talked about this thing with wallet procedures and disparate wallets. The concept is no different. This is the very bottom layer. So connectors are basically liquidity providers in, 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 in many ways. Uh, they are also, you know, they have accounts on both the disparate ecosystems and they are able to do it. Then obviously the Interledger has some very amazing and uh, really great things to do, which is it's able to make sure that, you know, the trust is established. It's make sure that escrow is there. You are trusting the system. You're not trusting the connector. You're trusting the system. You're trusting that the money is there and the money is there and, and you move it. You don't trust the connector because I don't know the connectors and it moves in a really cool way. So you, you know, first of all, you establish trust over here and then the money is released from the other end. So it's left to right and you will learn about the left to right system is all about. So ILP is an open protocol standard for payments. Uh, you can do micro payments with it. You can do major payments with it. You can do all sorts of payments with it. You can basically be able to receive uh, fiat funds. You could receive dollars. You could receive rupees. You could receive Starbucks points and you could receive Ethereum all on if you have such a system because the connectors would be, you know, making sure that this happens. 
And it's not that one connector can only connect it to one connector, could connect to 10 people. So I could have accounts in 10 different banks or 10 different uh, disparate ecosystems or payment systems or ledger systems. And as long as I have an account, I can cross communicate with them or I can route information. So connector is basically a financial router and ILP is the protocol that connects it all to. There are two very interesting talks given by a counter um, podcast. I will put the link below. Uh, it is a fascinating talk. Believe me, you really want to do watch it if you have the time and you want to understand this ecosystem. And then there are two presentation talks also given. So I have four talks in total. Two are podcast related and two other sort of the 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 presentations in those talks that are talked about as well as they're listed below and the two slides uh, presentations that they were using I will include the links to them below. ILP is something that is going to be huge. Uh, it is a bridge. It is a bridge protocol whether it stays that way later on you know they may, there could be a consortium of banks coming up with their own bridge protocol that allows just the same thing that ILP does even though ILP is independent etc remains to be seen. It's too early to bet on the right horses so I said you know let's I always say let's do the trifecta game let's bet on three horses. You never know one of them may win or all three of them may win etc and so forth. So I think ILP has a play here. I think it is. this is the right time to study it. I will include, like I said, all the six links that I uh, talked about, the two podcasts, the two presentations, and the two links on, on how to download the presentations from SlideShare. They're worth it. If you spend about five, six hours watching those uh, presentations, I think it will fascinate you beyond belief and you will really get you excited to get going on something like this. Um, I hope I've reached out to uh, the folks at ILP. Hopefully we will be able to interview some of them for Around the Coin. I don't know if you know, I have a podcast called AroundTheCoin.com. It has 22,000 listeners. It's weekly. You know, we didn't publish it for some time, but now we're pretty regular with it. So it's weekly, you know, um, if you want to go and you know check it out, it's AroundTheCoin.com. Um, and anyways, if you have questions regarding ILP uh, in comments, etc., please feel free to put it down below. Uh, if you have a business inquiry related to any of the products or services we sell, there's a contact form in the description below. There's also a WhatsApp. Please note, please note I use WhatsApp only and purely for business purposes, so no personal requests. As anyways, uh, it's been very illuminating and you know I hope to bring more information with respect to ILP. I am certainly a fan of it. However, I think it's not going to be all that easy. There are political pl plays over here, etc. that need to be taken into account. But it is something worth investigating your resources and time into and looking at it. Anyways, till next time, this is Faisal Khan signing off.